Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where we're having another data science day, dipping into a whole bucket of things called data solution accelerators. Now, these are pre-can, pre-built little bits of code, generally notebooks that you can download and start yourself that solve a common business problem. It's that whole thing of when you're working on something and you're like, surely someone's done this before. Surely someone solved this problem a million times in all of the other uh, companies doing the same thing that we do. And yeah, they have. And that's what Databricks are trying to do at the moment. They're trying to, they've got this whole page of all these millions of different use cases in retail, financial services, and all these different vertical domains saying, oh, people are commonly trying to do this. They're trying to forecast the value of something. They're trying to work out stocks. They're trying to segment your customers. Loads and loads of these different examples. And you can just hop onto the Databricks page and go, you know what? I'd like to download a pre-canned solution for doing that and then pull it apart and then take the bit of code that I write for you. I mean, got to be careful with these things. They're never going to be the take it, plug it in, and it does immediately what you want. But it's to get you there quicker. Hence, it's an accelerator, not like a, a product off the shelf. So that's the plan for today. As we know, I'm, I'm not a data scientist. I'm not, I'm not the person going and writing these algorithms. So once again, we'll be joined by Gavi, who I'll bring on in just a second to talk us through it and how it works and why we're using it and all of that good stuff. And always, if you are new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll put the link down to a big old blog about how the one I'm going to look at actually works. And yeah, we'll go from there. First thing, I want to just show you briefly the, how many solution accelerators there are. So there's a whole web page. You can search for Databricks Solution Accelerators and you get to this page. And there's all of these different solution accelerators doing these various different things. Sales forecast, risk management. You're doing point in time um, kind of uh, analytics. Loads of these different things. So you can just click on it get into the notebooks. That'll give you a bunch of notebooks going from where you get started to actually how you predict these things. And yeah, but it can be a little intimidating. It's just a just a big old notebook. Where, where do you get started? And that is why we need someone to explain what we're doing and how it works. So as always, welcome back to the show, Gavi. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Siren. Yeah, thanks for having me. Gosh, you're always welcome. So what, what are we doing today? What, what's the plan? Well, we're going to talk about um, jump-starting segmentation, right? Segmentation is something that can be used in, in many, many industries. So what I've done today as an introduction into Databricks Solution Accelerators, I've chosen an accelerator that's not vertically aligned to a particular industry. It can be used in many, many different industries, exactly like what you just said before. Okay. That's very, very good. Let me switch over so we can see your screen. There we go. Right, segmentation. so jumpstart your segmentation. Almost like you planned this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> right, so what's segmentation then, Simon? So segmentation is all to do with having a big data set, and most, most companies now have access to massive data sets, right? And it's about dividing or clustering, uh, whether it's your portfolios, customers, or products, into groups based on commonalities. So that's just a high level introduction into segmentation. Like we mentioned before, it can be used across many, many industries. One of my favorites, it's been used quite a lot in healthcare and life sciences recently. So a lot of medical centers are trying to use segmentation, trying to cluster their patients so they can come up with the right intervention programs. So that's one of my favorite, but can be used in many different industries. I like and, it because you know that's that's the that's the nice ethical good use case of how it, how it better humanity. I generally see segmentation for people trying to sell stuff, and so you get the marketeers segmenting their customer list and saying, "Well, we're going to approach that kind of person with that message. That message won't resonate with that kind of person, so we'll send them a different one that's more likely to get them on the hook and sell them some stuff." Used all over the place, right? It is. It is absolutely. In fact, I've got one example that I like to go through. It's insurance, right? It's used, you know. Commonly in insurance, in, in the insurance sector, and like you said, used by marketers to optimize the strategy, to optimize the campaigns, to push renewals and upsells. They can all they also use it very often to identify new pro prospect customers, products that they haven't pushed to customers, or untapped group of uh, customers that they have. So lots of different things that is useful within the insurance sector. I mean, do you, do you tend to use it as a feature that you then put into other models? So if you pre-segmented, you might use that as an indicator? Yeah, exactly. You could do that as well. It'd become, oh, I like this, Simon. Very advanced machine learning stuff. Build an ensemble about. model. Yeah, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yes, you could, Lena. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we we use this quite a lot, you know, in segmenting. We work uh, very closely with a lot of insurance clients, and we do a lot of segmentation. So this is one use case that we really wanted to talk about today, and how how we why is it important as well, and how we how we get there using Databricks Solution Accelerators. That's what the talk is all about today. So in terms of why it's important, like we said again, just to reiterate, it helps people tailor marketing strategy. We can use it for good as well, like the medical example that we gave before. Uh, personalized customer experience, whether it's medical, energy or utility sector, insurance, financial, it's about personalizing yeah. your customer experience. And by doing so, you increase your revenues by 5 to 15%. These are figures that were published by McKinsey and Company. And also your marketing spend, right? You get 10 to 30% greater returns. So you can do better stuff for cheaper. Exactly. Makes sense. Exactly. So in terms of how you implement uh, segmentation, using machine learning techniques, right? Using clustering algorithms. And clustering is an unsupervised machine learning method. We're not gonna go into how that works today. We've got lots of blogs on our website. So these are all the articles that we've written very recently. So feel free to have a look at them if you want to know more about it. But what we're gonna do today is talk about if you're a company, right? Looking to use segmentation for, a set, for your data set, how can you get that quicker? So we can look at this data break solution accelerators, how we've used it as well with clients, and it really does jumpstart your machine learning journey. So this is the, the customer segmentation solution accelerator that you can get to straight from the data blog. But again, you've got a big old write up about how you get started down. I'll put a link to that down in the description so people can go and dig into it. Exactly. So All right. what we, that's good. What we can do now is just have a look at what, what the accelerator is all about. Just to reiterate as well, the accelerators are there to help you um, help you get that. But what I was going to say is you can't just take the whole notebooks and apply it to your problem. You've got yeah. to tweak it accordingly, right? So if you go up to the accelerators that Databricks provided, this is the segmentation accelerators. You've got a set of four notebooks. The first two notebooks are centered around preparing your data and creating the features. Really important steps, but again, it's very problem specific. Yeah, makes sense. And yeah. looking at that, so that's it's got a data model that's expected, right? So it needs certain inputs in a certain shape with a certain schema and certain names and all of that stuff for it to bolt on top of it. Yeah, that's right. So this data set that the solution accelerator is based on is based on a retail data set where they're taking loads of different tables, joining it together, creating the features, cleaning it all. And, yeah. and that also comes from experience. You know, have you got that experience working in a retail company? What what tables would you expect to give you the most information? So what I'm really essentially trying to say here is your first two notebooks are, you, if, I mean, all means, have a look at the code. It's really good code. It tells you, gives you, gives you an idea of what you can do as well if you've got a data set, if you're working in a retail-based industry. But you'll have to tailor the notebooks accordingly. Yeah. I mean, so that, that, again, that's why it's an accelerator. It's not a product that's just going to work off the top of the off the shelf your data might not look like that it might be called something different it might be all in one big table you need to break it up into the expected data sets it's a there'll be some tweaking of that to get exactly. it into that expected model so that you can then kind of jigsaw it into what you've already got makes sense exactly right so that's your first two notebooks what's really interesting to me is the clustering notebook so your, your notebook number three and what they've done what they've done is they've detailed all the codes here really well. Okay, I found that really, really useful. And what they're doing is once they do the data prep and feature engineering, they're calling the data in and then they're applying k-means clustering, right? Now k-means clustering, very popular a machine learning algorithm, but what it does is it does, it takes all your data set, um, it defines cluster centers and then tries to say, well, three numbers are three, three clusters would be really good or four clusters would be really good or five clusters so it's it's a very iterative process right so so, so uh, just to explain if you scroll up a little bit you've got kind of your you've got the clustering somewhere there's a diagram of like the little pretty there we go so we can see lo loads of data with no clustering then if you scroll down to the next nice pretty picture or the next one this is it you can, you can see it actually broken into the expected clusters so that's so in that case you've chosen four clusters so it's breaking up your big whole pattern of data it's saying we're going to break this into these four different segments, right? 
right? But we came in clustering, it's randomly selected. So initial yep. clusters is like, I'm going to guess based on my data set, I'm going to guess four clusters would be sufficient, but we don't really know, right? You've got to work out the metrics accordingly to say, well, four clusters is going to give you the best metrics overall. And the way we do this, which is which is out, which is what I found really interesting, and to be honest with you, is what I've learned, spoken to you about, is how they work out the number of clusters. And like I said, it's an extremely iterative process. We don't know whether it's going to be four, five, six clusters would be appropriate. So you've got to work work that out, and that can be computationally very expensive and time consuming. So what they've done here in the notebook is to use Spark RDD. So that is something that I found really interesting and basically it's distributing the workload, right? This is something as a data scientist, I didn't know about, but I'm sure yeah. you know a lot about it, Simon. I have. I'm acquainted with the odd, <laughs> the odd RDD. So, yeah, so this, this is a really interesting piece. I mean, so I guess when, when we had this conversation, okay, you were coming from the, yeah, I mean, K-means isn't distributed. It's just going to run on a single node. It's fairly single threaded. It's... It, it's it's you know it's fairly, it's fairly straightforward and so we're talking about what why is this actually useful as a as a solution accelerator what problem is this solving that no one's already solved just by pulling in the expected algorithms that we know and this little chunk of code is super interesting because this is essentially saying well there's a bit saying how many iterations do you want to do so 100 iterations uh for each value of k so actually which it's creating lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of doing the same work many many times and actually each iteration doesn't have to be single thread you can take all that work and then spread it out. So there's just a few simple steps here, which is creating just a quick dummy in memory kind of cross tabulation of how many iterations versus what your incoming data set is. That's what that first iteration is doing. Right. But then it's repartitioning it. So it's spreading it across your cluster. So you're nice. saying, well, actually, if my cluster has four workers, we've got a default parallelism. So it's deciding how many of those iterations it's giving to each of those workers. So it's spreading that workload out across the Spark cluster. So you can throw a massive cluster at it. Because if you found that the clustering wasn't performing very well, or that actually it wasn't very accurate, and you're like, you know what, we need more iterations to get better accuracy. We need to try a thousand times, not a hundred times per k-means value. That's going to go really, really slow. Or you can make a bigger cluster. And because you've got a really smart bit of code here, it'll actually spread that work out far, far better amongst the cluster. So it's doing some interesting sparky stuff, more on the engineering side, to make your data science better. Yeah, and, and indeed, exactly what you said, right? So previously, we've not really, before using Databricks, we worked off a single cluster, and it takes a long time. If you yeah. if you want to work out the, the right number of clusters, and you're trying to explore that range, it does take a long time. So this has really sped things up. Very cool. So yeah, this has been this is interesting. And what they've done is, as well, the solution accelerators that are provided for us, are also based on best practices, right? So when you do your K-mean segmentation, there are a number of ways that you can determine your, your ideal cluster sensors. And what they've done, because they, they can distribute the workload, they've validated the K-means clustering by using a number of techniques. So the second technique is the silhouette score, which again, can be computationally very exhaustive. But here, they've also used the Spark RDD stuff just to speed things up a bit more. So that gives us the flexibility and opportunity to use two techniques to validate. Right, what is it going to be? If one technique is telling me three clusters, is a second technique telling me it's going to be four or five? And, and that's really good practice as well, to, to try two different techniques. There you go. So that's what they've done here, and that's what I found really, really interesting. And then what they do is, once they identify the best game models, then it's quite straightforward, right? Then it's about um, plotting your data out, making, visualizing your clear clusters. And there's lots of clustering algorithms out there. If you read our blog, there's over 10 clustering algorithms that can be applied. And what they've done here as well, provided that opportunity for you to try out different clustering algorithms. So what you might see, if they had uh, segmentation, but for different industries, it might be actually commonly a certain clustering algorithm is better for one industry because of the kind of data patterns you tend to see. Hence why you've got these vertically aligned ones. Segmentation itself is very trust applicable, exactly. but they're very specific tailored cases. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we, we have found this extremely useful. 
and we've taken it, we've implemented it. But I'm sure there's people out there saying, really, you know, can you really show us how you've implemented it? And we've done that with our with our blogs as well. There'll be a link to the blog where we've taken the solution accelerator, right? Applied it on a generic Kaggle data set based on uh, segmenting loan predictions. And it's given us pretty good results. So it's a That's really good. good starting point in terms of just trying to accelerate uh, to the end segmentation goal. So if you've got your data set and if you know what features that would be really good for segmentation and you're at that stage, using the solution accelerators just gets you there a lot quicker. Cool. And I think kind of when we kind of originally spoke about this, we're trying to kind of answer the question of someone going, well, when do I use this rather than using something like AutoML? And we're saying that AutoML gives you the kind of, it's not a problem that's been solved. It's just any generic problem. You throw it at it. It tries loads of different approaches, some which might be completely inappropriate, but it's just doing a big widespread to try and give you a starting base that you need to pass on to a, a data scientist to then work with and tailor and tweak and apply real deep domain knowledge to. Whereas over on this side, this is someone who's actually solved a real world problem. They've applied yeah. some real proper tailored thinking about that for that specific domain. And yeah. then they've made, they've pulled it back a bit to make it generic. Exactly. So it's, exactly. it's a generic thing that's pre-built that's not trying a big scattergun of approaches. No. It's a specific, this is a really good approach for this one specific problem. That if you're trying to solve a different problem, probably not the right solution accelerator for you, mm. but it's a slightly different approach, but they're still helping people get there faster. Exactly. And I, I really like that. And it's all about getting there faster, making sure that machine learning projects don't fail. And this certainly does help. Very cool. All right. So what people's biggest takeaway? What should people do next thinking about the solution accelerators? Personally, I'd like to know if anybody has used the solution accelerators. How have they found it? Have they found it really useful? Have they come across um, any challenges? I'd just like to get some feedback about it and whether they'd like to see us talk about different solution accelerators. Cool. All right, well, that sounds good. So that's that. That is the the call for everybody. If you're interested in this, what we'd quite like to do is do this same kind of spotlight on a load of the different solution accelerators and pull it out and go right. What problems is one solving? Is there anything novel and interesting and new in the approach? When should you use it? And we'll do a range of these videos if you're happy to come back, Gary, and then talk through those things. Let us know if you're interested. I know you're interested, Gary. <laughs> the audience at home, if they are interested in us spotlighting some of these other uh, solution accelerators, or even if the solution accelerators that you would love to see, if there's common problems you think people are tackling over and over again, that there isn't something pre-built for, we can go and knock on Databricks store and say, hey, should we build one for you? Or do they want to build one? Or do they have one already that they haven't released yet? We can have that conversation if you let us know down in the comments. All right. Well, thank you, Gavin. Thank you very much. I want to wrap up. All right. So, yeah. Solution accelerators. Pre-built bits of code that are there on the internet for free for you to download. You're going to have to do a little bit of work. You're going to have to tailor your data set so it fits into the data that it's expecting. It's going to be using an approach, and that might not be the right approach. It might use three or four different approaches, and you go, I don't need that, I don't need that, I need that bit. It's all about giving you a load of cookie-cutter sample bits of code that are a working solution that you can then take and run with to save you a load of work and to show you how other people have approached that same problem. So it might be that you've already built a better approach, and then this is going to actually allow you to compare it and just benchmark it and show you that your approach is better. It might be that you've no idea where to start, and this is just gives you an idea of the kind of approaches people in industry have used. In any case, it's a really good resource of lots of different information about how to solve these really common industry use cases. So just take a look and get started. As I said, for this one, there's a big old blog that Gary's written about how to get started with it. I'll put the link down in the comments and let us know if you want to see other solution accelerators, what kind of business problems you're trying to solve, what kind of machine learning use cases you would like to see in the future. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you again. Cheers.